all of these macromolecules should be starting to become a bit familiar to you. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to name the four organic molecules. You can see at the top of your paper there are targets that we are going to reach with this video cast. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill out the name of the four organic molecules common in living organisms. So the top of your paper should look like mine with protein, lipid, carbohydrate, and nucleic acid for our four macromolecules. If you need to, go ahead, pause the video, and fill these items in. The next item we want to know is we want to be able to do target number two. I can state and identify the monomer, or the building block. The word mono means one, so that means these are the smaller pieces that make up each type of macromolecule. So for a protein, the smaller pieces that make up a protein are called amino acids. The smaller pieces that make up a lipid are called fatty acids or glycerol. The smaller pieces that make up carbohydrates are mono and disaccharides. Mono stands for one and di stands for two and the word saccharide stands for sugars. So that means that carbohydrates, smaller pieces, are made up of either one or two piece sugars. Finally, we have nucleic acids, and the smaller pieces of a nucleic acid is called a nucleotide. And in a nucleotide, we'll actually learn about the three smaller pieces that make up the nucleotide even when we get into DNA. But the nucleotide is made up of three parts, an acid, a base, and a sugar. You can remember those three parts of the smaller nucleotide by remembering abs. We're actually going to get into that in big detail when we start learning about the structure of DNA. But nucleotide is the key word that we're going to remember right now. The third target we want to be able to do is we want to be able to identify which atoms are present in each molecule. So in a protein, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. In a lipid, we only have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. In a carbohydrate, we have the same, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And in nucleic acids, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. I remember these, chon, cho, cho, chomp. Nucleic acids have the most, chomp. Proteins, chon, and then the other two, cho and cho. The third, fourth target we want to focus on is knowing the way that the body uses these macromolecules. So proteins are used in the body for a lot of different things. They're extremely important. They are used in enzymes. They're used in your muscles, your bones, your skin color and eye color, as well as your hair and nails. Now, protein, you actually make some protein in your body, but there are actually some proteins that the only way that you can get them is to eat those proteins. And so it's extremely important that in order for your muscles, your bones, all of your body's um, cellular reactions to work right with enzymes, for your skin, your hair color, your eye color, for all those things to function correctly, you have to eat properly. They, um, those proteins, if you don't get the proper proteins, it could actually be the reason that you have problems like maybe you have acne or maybe your hair is thinning. It could actually be all connected to your diet. Um, one of the best proteins to eat is actually egg whites. Egg whites actually contain every single amino acid that your body needs. Moving on to lipids. A lot of people think that lipids are bad for your body because you think, oh, fats, those are not any good for your body. Um, but they're actually very important. Your body needs lipids in order to build its cell membranes. 
um, also for long-term energy storage, as well as for hormones. And hormones are involved in not just things like puberty. They're involved in all kinds of different processes that we'll actually learn about towards the end of the year. So not having any fats in your diet at all is actually very bad for your body because Remember, you need to replace cells, and if you can't make new cell membranes because you don't have enough lipids going into your body, you're not going to be able to repair your body. So it all comes down to a proper balance also with these macromolecules. You don't want too many fats or lipids, but you don't want to cut them out of your diet completely. Next are the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are going to perform, uh, provide you with short-term or immediate energy. This is um, why people who are big athletes are going to have things like pasta parties before a big meet or a big game because they're going to provide your body with necessary quick energy that you need. Finally, nucleic acids are used to build your DNA and RNA. Of course, that's important because that's the instructions for your body to do pretty much everything. We're going to get into a lot more detail about nucleic acids. We'll actually have a whole unit on DNA and RNA, but for now, you just need to know that nucleic acid is a macromolecule. The smaller parts are called nucleotides, made up of CHOMP, C-H-O-N-P, and uses in the body, makes your DNA and RNA. Next, we're going to move on to some examples of foods that you can eat in order to get these different kinds of macromolecules. Some of these you're probably pretty familiar with. So like I said earlier, protein's extremely important. Now, one of the number one foods that you're going to get protein from are animal products, such as meat and eggs. However, if you're a vegetarian, since protein is extremely important to your body, there are other items that you can get protein from, such as beans and tofu. Foods that are primarily lipids are going to include oils and butter. Now, of course, there are fats and lipids in other foods, like avocado has a lot of very good lipids. Um, and then there's other foods that are high in fat as well, um, such as you can have a high percentage of fat in the meat that you eat. You can have fried foods, and those are fried in the oils, and so they have a lot of fat in them. So there's lots of other foods that also have fats in them. Even milk has fat in them, but oil and butter are the two that are pure lipids or pure fats. For carbohydrates, you probably realize that pastas and rice and bread are carbohydrates. The one you probably didn't realize is that fruits are also an immediate or short-term energy storage. Those guys are made up of mono and disaccharide, so fruit is also a carbohydrate. Finally, for nucleic acids, since nucleic acids are found in DNA and RNA, that would mean that everything that you eat that's living has nucleic acids in it. So if you eat an egg, an egg has DNA and RNA in it because it was a living thing. Or if you eat some chicken, that has nucleic acids in it because that was, it had DNA and RNA in it. It was a chicken. Um, a lot of nucleic acids get broken down when you eat something that gets cooked. Um, but remember that we eat things such as broccoli and, um, other raw fruits and vegetables, those are all living things. They all have cells that make them up. And so inside those cells are DNA and RNA. And so they have nucleic acids inside of them. All right, that wraps up our four targets. Yes, you have to memorize these four macromolecules and the targets of naming them, identifying the monomer, stating which kind of atoms are present, the uses, and some examples of food. So my suggestion, make some Quizlet study cards and start working on that.